Welcome back. The Bahamas recorded its fourth traffic fatality for the year, claiming the life of an adult male. The incident occurred shortly after 4 p.m. on Sunday on John F. Kennedy Drive, west of the Gladstone Road roundabout. Police say while traveling west on JFK, the male operator of a motorcycle reportedly lost control, collided with a central median or collided with the center median and was subsequently thrown from the motorcycle, receiving extensive injuries to the head and body. Emergency medical technicians responded, examined the cyclist and determined that there were no vital signs of life. It is believed the operator of the motorcycle was not wearing a helmet. Police are encouraging all motorcyclists to wear protective helmets as they can possibly save your lives. In 2023, there was a 50% increase in deaths from motorcycle accidents. Today, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Fred Mitchell, sought to give an overview of the government's international travels and high-level meetings that took place this past weekend, led by Prime Minister Philip Davis and his international diplomacy at the 19th Non-Aligned Summit in Uganda. Prime Minister Philip Davis should be arriving back in the Bahamas after a successful foray into world diplomacy at the Conference of the Non-Aligned Movement and also the Conference of the G77 plus China. He had a detailed chat with President Yari Museveni of Uganda, who chaired the conference. In addition, we have formally settled our relations with Kenya and signed visa abolition agreements with Benin for tourists and with Nigeria for diplomats and public officials. Good work by our team, Director General uh, Jerusa Ali, Kimiko Sands, and Antonio Butler are the Foreign Service officers. Congratulations and thanks. I want to thank Minister Alfred Sears for filling in for me while I was on other assignments in California and at the OAS. I will be speaking today in Kampala at the G77 conference. Again, our country is setting its foot forward for a run for the U.S., uh, the U.N. Security Council for the 32-33 period. That was Minister of Foreign Affairs Fred Mitchell bringing us up to speed on the government's activities overseas on the weekend. Bahamians impacted by the shantytown demolitions and living at the Landshark Hotel relying on government housing assistance have issued complaints against the social services housing program claiming that now that the government's contract with the Landshark Hotel has ended, they have nowhere to go. Minister of State Miles LaRota spoke to reporters clarifying the government's current contracts under the housing program. I have said that the government ended the agreement with Landshark and with Sunfund December 31st. Alternative, alternative housing have been provided at Point Siena, but there are other uh, private homes, entities that social services rent from. So Minister LaRota also gave an update on the number of rooms currently at the Ponciana Inn on Bernard Road, stating that the Department of Social Services has plans to expand the available accommodations for those in need, including people residing at the Land Shark Hotel. There's still 18. We look very shortly to have a full complement of 52. I think. So let's contact the Department of Social Services and they will be forwarded to the various offices where they could get the assistance requested. Minister LaRota is advising Bahamians that require housing assistance as well as people displaced by shantytown demolitions to apply for assistance if needed. And finally, while some of our young people are engaged in criminal and antisocial behavior, there are far more young Bahamians doing positive things. First, the new track and field season is underway with indoor competition. And on Saturday, 28-year-old Olympian Devin Charlton set a new Bahamian national record and world-leading time in the 60-meter hurdles while competing at the Corky Classic at Texas Tech University. She clocked 7.75 seconds, improving on her national record of 7.81 seconds, which was set back in 2022 at the IAAF World Championships. Also from the baseball diamond, another young Bahamian signs with a Major League Baseball team. 17-year-old Rohan Culmer, seen here, signed a contract with the Washington Nationals on Saturday at the Andre Rogers Baseball Stadium. He became the sixth Bahamian to sign a Major League Baseball contract so far this year. Each signing is worth hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. And that'll do it for your JCN Evening News. Once again, I'm Jerino Saunders. Thank you so much for joining us. This segment of the news has been brought to you by Sun Oil Limited.
Thank you.